Radiant Black, issue number 10 from Image Comics. So this issue was a, a freaking trip. <laughs> they did a lot of crazy things with this issue in terms of uh, the way they did their art style and stuff like that. And I, I got to give them props for that. So this issue is basically Marshall trying to save Nathan. And to kind of catch everybody up, Nathan is Marshall's best friend. He's been in a coma for multiple issues. He was on life support. In the last issue, his parents decided to take him off life supports. Of course, you know, Marshall got really upset with that. And he basically believes that there is a way to save Nathan. He believes that there's a way to use the Radiant powers in some way to save him. But the Radiant wasn't willing to help him. So Marshall put himself onto some train tracks in front of an oncoming train and basically told the Radiant inside himself, either you help me or I'm going to let this train hit me and kill me, which is going to end up hurting you in the long term. So what's it going to be? And then there was a flash of light. And that's where this issue starts. So this issue starts with uh, with Marshall falling. He's, he grabs his orb. He transforms into his Radiant Power. And then he meets the giant Radiant form i don't know what how else to explain it it's like the the radiant that talks to to marshall that talked to nathan whoever wears the radiant black i guess this is the uh the dude that that chats with you and there's a lot of like just weird dialogue where he's like you know welcome to exist existence existence is truth all this like just weird mumble jumbo but yeah marshall is basically like hey like i want to save nathan like, you, you know what I want. That's what I want. So help me do that. And yeah, I, the, the creature gives this weird thing. Like, uh, to reach Nathan, you must reach truth. There's only truth in existence. And of course, Marshall's like, what the hell does any of this mean? <laughs> and then the thing tells him, like, um, doing this will come at a great cost. Like, you, you will die. And that's what everyone keeps telling him. Everyone keeps telling him, like, if you do this, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're not going to be able to survive. Are you, do you still want to do this? And Marshall's like, well, like, yeah, like he's my best friend. If there's a chance that I can save him, then I'm willing to do that. So the creature basically brings him to this other black hole orb thing. It looks like the radiant symbol. And says, uh, you know, where, where you must go, I can't follow. Um, so, you know, don't despair. You will surely die alone, but you will not be alone. So yes, this is like a lot of these just weird quotes that's kind of like, what the hell F are you talking about, dude? So he gets teleported to this another plane of existence where he meets the, um, I don't know what the hell to call him. Let's just call him uh, Radiant Saber. He's, he's the one that the Radiants grouped up together to fight against in previous issues. So he's here and he, he's here to be Marshall's guide and to guide him to what you know to, to save his friend and stuff and he's basically constantly telling him like you're not gonna be able to pull this off are you sure you want to do this uh you know you're you're sure you will surely die yada yada there's this cool like two-page splash panel where we have them like walking and they're talking about like how like uh time and gravity and all this stuff is different here and then we we just have like this weird spiral and they're just walking and the dialogue keeps spiraling along with them i will say this was kind of annoying to read especially like, i guess if, you know if you're reading this you know in the physical form you're gonna have to constantly twirl your book around to get their dialogue but uh yeah i mean i like what they're doing with this and then um they they meet like a ghost version of nathan and then the, the ghost version says like you know uh, i'm not nathan i'm just using this form so that you'll listen to me better you will pay attention to what i must say and once again, the thing is like, are you sure you want to continue? This is going to be a one-way trip. You will surely die. And he's like, if this path will take me to Nathan, then sure. Marshall shoots at it. And then he gets attacked by a bunch of cosmic ghosts. And they get teleported. And then we get this other like strange thing. Like, so they're in this new realm. And then this one, all the pages are now highly stylized. It's just very... Oh, what's the term for it? There's a technical term for this kind of style, but I'm not an artist. I'm a writer, so I don't really remember what it is. But everything is like silhouette, like colored silhouette. Very little detail, but it's just, I like how they're doing this. I like how like every single location that they get teleported to, the, the style of the comic will change in a bit. Like either it be the coloring or just like, 
I, the, the way the dialogue is, is given to you, like everything changes depending on what kind of realm they're at. And I don't know, I just think that's kind of cool. But yeah, then this giant being shows up and basically says, uh, you know, like, why are you here? And Marshall's like, I told you, I'm here to save my best friend. He's like, you're lying. Uh, he's like, I'm lying. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I told you, I'm here to save Nathan. Why would I be lying about that? And then the thing is like, you know, there is only truth in existence. And um, yeah, we get just more craziness happening. I'm not going to go over everything because I don't want to like spoil everything. Like, You guys should check this out. But uh, the artwork is just beautiful and crazy and super just insane. I love what they're doing with this, especially this. This looks really cool as well. Like there's just, just a lot of craziness. But eventually we get to the point where the thing is constantly questioning Marshall, like, why are you here? And he says, I'm here to save Nathan. And then eventually Marshall breaks down and he says that, like, he's he's scared. Um, like, I, I'm doing this because I, I love Nathan, but I'm also doing this because I hate him. Because he, he deserves this power, not me. Um, his life has purpose. Uh, he's the one chasing his dream and moving on. Uh, you know, he's the one that was able to, to move on from his family, his hometown, from me. He should not be the one that that dies. Like, I'm the one that has nothing to my name, in a sense. So, yeah, Marshall basically explains, like, you know, I hate him for, 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 for being all the things that I couldn't be. But I also love him because he's my best friend. And throughout this whole thing, I'm just kind of thinking, like, are you sure about that? Like, are you sure that his life has purpose and he's doing better than you? Like, let's seriously think about this. Nathan is a failed writer. He, he, he sent his, you know, scripts, manuscripts to plenty of places and they've turned him down. Uh, we saw this in the first issue. He is so much in debt that he had to move back in with his parents. He doesn't have a, a job currently. He got the rating power, then he didn't really do anything with it until he saved the building from collapsing, which put him into a coma. So that that's Nathan. Meanwhile, Marshall, yeah, he's stuck in this same ho hometown, but he has a job. He has a job that pays him well enough that he can have his own house. He's not living in an apartment or anything. He, you know, he, he lives in the house. He's done way more with the powers than Nathan did. And Marshall has had the powers, I think, for less time than Nathan has. So... It's this weird thing where I'm like, is the comic trying to tell me that Nathan is the better person? Or is this just Marshall like having depression or just having a negative view on himself and he sees his friend as being more deserving than him? So he's kind of making some of this stuff up where he's kind of like, uh, you know, Nathan is, is better than me because he was able to to move on from his from his hometown and and live out his, you know, chase his dream. And it's, and so Marshall is having a, what's the word I want to look for? He, he He's having a exaggerated look at what Nathan has done with his life. Because, yeah, he moved out of his hometown and now he has to move back in with his parents because he can't afford to live anywhere because he, he doesn't have, he, he's, he's drastically in debt and he doesn't have a job and his career is, as a writer is going nowhere. So it's kind of like, is this the writer trying to tell me that Nathan is better than Marshall? Or is this just Marshall suffering his own, you know, depressive episode or just seeing Nathan as like putting Nathan on a pedestal when Nathan really should not be on a pedestal? Because I'm like, dude, like you have a job, you have your own source of income, you're able to live in your own house, you have these powers that granted you got them when Nathan when Nathan went to a coma, but you've done more with these powers. Like we we've seen even in the last issue, it was done in like montages, but we've seen him like uh, we're talking about like almost every day, at least every week. I think it was actually multiple times a week. He, he's stopping other he's stopping criminal. That's the weird thing. It's like it seems like the world is kind of out to get Marshall. So like in the previous issue, everyone was talking about how great Nathan was and how they prefer him to be the, the Radiant Black rather than Marshall. But it's like, Nathan didn't do anything with his powers. When he had his powers, the only thing, he stopped a, uh, a bank robbery, 
but so did Marshall. In fact, Marshall has stopped multiple bank robberies since he's gotten his powers. He helped a family that had a flat tower by carrying their car to a mechanic. And then he saved the building from collapsing on, on people and that ended up putting him into a coma. Meanwhile, Marshall has stopped multiple bank robberies. He's stopped multiple criminals in the montages in the last uh, issue. He saved the world from Radiant Saber. Like, Marshall has done way more than Nathan ever did with the powers. So it's just kind of weird how everyone keeps putting Nathan on a pedestal when it's like, actually, Marshall's the better Radiant. Maybe that's just my bias. Like, I started off this series absolutely hating Marshall. Like, I just found his personality just to be annoying. And I was like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't become, like, an important character in this. And then ever since he got the powers, I've actually started to like him more because I like what they do with him with the power, you know, ever since he got the powers. Like, they didn't completely have his personality pull a 180, but his personality now works better with these powers, and I like his struggles and stuff way more, and I find him way more entertaining than I ever did with Nathan. So it's just, it's kind of weird how, like, the comic is trying to tell me that Nathan is the better character, or at least that's what it seems like here. It seems like here Marshall is just constantly degrading himself and putting Nathan on a pedestal. And in the previous issue, we had everyone talking about how much better of a, in, in comic, in universe, how everyone oh, wants to talk about how much better Nathan was as ready and black than Marshall. And it's like, are you, are you sure about that? Like Marshall has done way more good than Nathan ever did. So not to blast on Nathan, but it, it's just, it's this weird thing where I'm like, I don't know if this is just from Marshall's point of view. So we're, we're, we're seeing this character put his best friend on a pedestal that he doesn't deserve, or if this is the comic and the writer themselves trying to beat it into our heads that Nathan is the better Radiant because I don't see that. I see Marshall as being the better Radiant and overall the better character. Um, not to say I hate Nathan whatsoever. Uh, I just, in terms of who, like if I had to choose who do I want to, to be the main focus of this series from here on out, I wanted to stay with Marshall. I think he, he's the better character. But yeah, there's more. But I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil anything else. I think this is this is good enough. This was a good issue. Like I I really liked it. I really liked the, just like the crazy stuff they did with the art. Like it, it's you've seen little little glimpses of it, but I'm not gonna show everything. But yeah, like this is this is basically the writer and the artist are like, all right, let's let's do some unique things with with the story like um not just with the writing but what what can we do with the artwork to kind of fit the craziness of the, of the whole uh radiant and the cosmic and the the weird you know time and gravity and all these crazy things like what can we do to to really show that you know marshall is no longer in kansas anymore you know in a sense and they i think they pulled it off like spectacularly i think this is this was great like freaking amazing issue i loved it yeah, uh, I said it before. Radiant Black started off really, really slow, and I heavily criticized it because I saw so much potential in it, and I feel like it wasn't living up to it. But lately, it has been. Um, like, the first three issues, three and a half issues, were kind of boring to me. Like, they were just... They were, they would be like a, like a, a C, C minus. They were just like... They, they were average to just below... Sub average, but... Lately, like the last few issues, especially, have really kicked things into gear, and things have just been getting better and better and better. So uh, I'm really happy with that. Now this like this is what I was hoping this series would be from the get go, and now that's what it is. And I know some people are like, oh well, you know, we had to we had to do some world building and stuff. It's like there's better ways to do world building without being freaking boring for multiple issues. Look at Ultra Mega. Ultra Mega nailed the world building while still being freaking fantastic from the from issue one. This series, it took a few issues to get there, but it finally did, and now it's been phenomenal. It's one of my favorite series to read at the moment. Like it, it started off slow and boring, but it really just skyrocketed, it, and it, it, it's it's great. I highly recommend checking out this series if you haven't already. And um, yeah, it's just it's getting better and better. I, I love this series. I love this issue. This issue, recommend, thumbs up, all, all, all good marks. This, this was a fantastic issue. So, so go check it out. Radiant Black, issue number 10 from Image Comics. Freaking amazing series. So yeah, really, really, I, I highly recommend it. Go check it out if you haven't already. But there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Later.
So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.